Good morning students. Welcome to the seventh lecture on embedded system design course. So in the last two lectures uh, we have discussed about the core of embedded systems. In the core of embedded systems we studied about the, the general purpose processor and domain specific processor and we have also seen about uh, the other devices which can be used as core of embedded system like programmable logic devices. Next. Uh, we have studied about application specific integrated circuits and uh, also the commercial of the shelf components that is cots and uh, in the today's lecture we'll be uh, studying about the the memory part of the embedded system so memory is an important part of the embedded system why because uh, for any data storage or any program storage we require the, the memory so all the embedded systems or uh, all the embedded system process controllers may not contain the, the built-in memory. So in that case we need to have the, the memory which need to be externally placed on the embedded system for storing the program and data. So that we can say that memory is an important part of the embedded system. So generally there are two types of memories. One is the, the program storage memory or we can call it as a ROM and what is the other type of memory means data memory and uh, it is also called as a RAM. So why program storage uh, memory is nothing but uh, ROM because uh, we will be storing the program from one location to the other location which need to be accessed in a sequence so that uh, uh, it is nothing but access the data locations in a sequential way and it is only read only. And next coming to the data so data will be stored in different locations uh, based on the, the availability of the space and uh, whenever the data is needed it need to access randomly. So that uh, we call the, the data memory as the random access memory. So as I told earlier, so certain embedded process and microcontrollers contain built-in program memory as well as the, the data memory. And uh, whenever this is available on the, the processor or the controller, we call it as the on-chip memory. It is called as the on-chip memory. And whenever it is not available in the, the microprocessor or controller, then it need to be added externally and we can call it as the off-chip memory. And uh, first we'll be studying about the program storage memory. That is nothing but ROM and uh, after that we'll be going on to the, the data memory or random access memory. So coming to ROM, so the main function of the ROM is nothing but it need to store the, the program instructions and uh, ROM also retains its contents even after the power is turned off. Even after the power is turned off, the ROM contents will remain same that means they will not be erased if at all the power is not available so that it is called as the non-volatile storage memory uh, because in an embedded system so that need to do some work for a lifetime or it as it is intended for some specific application it need to have that program for its lifetime if at all power is off that should not lose the the content so that uh, so rom is used for storing the the program and uh, we call it as the non-volatile storage memory why because its contents will be retained even when power is turned off and uh, depending upon the, the fabrication erasing and programming techniques the ROM that is uh, program storage memory are classified into different categories so we'll be seeing what are the categories so one we have is nothing but the masked ROM it is uh, MROM it can be simply called as the mascot ROM so we'll be uh, studying in detail about each of them in detail and in the next slides next uh, we have programmable read-only memory there is nothing but one-time programmable memory and uh, coming to the the other memory other uh, read-only that is a uh, read-only memory we have EEPROM that is uh, erasable programmable read-only memory and next we have e square prom it is electrically erasable programmable read-only memory and next uh, we'll be studying about 
flash memory and uh, there is one category of ROM which is uh, uh, which is nothing but also comes under the the RAM also comes under the RAM so will be better studying this uh, uh, topic under the the RAM section itself instead of uh, the ROM section it is a RAM but it is non volatile in nature so as we say non volatile memories are nothing but can be considered under ROM but uh, it is a RAM so that will be studying under the the RAM section itself okay so if you have not yet uh, gone through the the core of embedded system please go through that uh, just you can go to the playlist and uh, check the the lectures uh, in the embedded system design course so which is from the starting first unit that is uh, unit 1 where we have the definition the classification uh, characteristics purpose of embedded system major application areas of embedded system quality attributes of embedded systems and in the unit 2 also we have two lectures on core of embedded systems so in the first uh, uh, lecture of uh, core of embedded system we have the microprocessors microcontrollers uh, and uh, digital signal process as well there is a classification of general purpose process and the domain specific process and in the lecture 2 of the core of embedded system we have the the programmable logic devices commercial off the shelf components and application specific integrated circuits please close to go through those videos so that you will get better idea of uh, what are the components of an embedded system and coming to the the first type of uh, rom that is nothing but masked rom so in the masked rom is nothing but one time programmable memory one time programmable memory and uh, it uses hardwired hardwired technology for storing data and uh, it is factory programmed and it is factory programmed and this is done by masking and metallization process and uh, how this is done means uh, according to the the requirement of the end user or what is the data needed for the end user so that will be programmed by using masking and metallization process and that is done at the factory itself and uh, it is done using hardware technology what are hardware means masking and metallization process and it is only one time programmable why because user cannot program it uh, it, it need to be programmed only at the factory why because it includes some masking techniques metallization technique that may not all be available at the end user so it is called as the the masked ROM and uh, what is hardware means so they will be uh, they will be um, making the IC in such a way that uh, we cannot modify the data that is uh, the wiring will be laid or the, the particular places where we need to store one so the wiring will be laid or wherever zero is noted the wiring will be not there so like that that will be designed and it will be storing the data which is uh, needed for the user and uh, the advantage of this MROM is nothing but it is low cost for high volume production that means uh, whenever uh, we have the MROM produced in large in number then the cost will be very less and it is also least expensive type among the solid state memories and limitation of MROM based firmware storage or we can say uh, the software storage or program storage uh, it is inability to modify the device firmware against firmware upgrades that means if at all we need to change the program then it is not possible in case of the MROM why because that is uh, programmed at the factory and the uh, end user cannot program it so that the upgradation is not possible so MROM is uh, permanent in bit storage and uh, it is not possible to alter the bit information so that is the main disadvantage of the MROM. The advantage is that uh, it, it costs low uh, when it is produced in larger number and it is also the least expensive among the solid state memories. And next, uh, there are different mechanisms uh, by which this masking process can uh, masking process can be done to store the data in the, the masked ROM. So one is by using implantation 
or other is by this other is by uh, including a transistor uh, with high voltage so these are there are different techniques so these are the main by using an implant or by using a transistor the mosfet ram can be fabricated and next coming to the second type of uh, rom that is nothing but programmably programmable read only memory or we can call it as one time programmable memory programmable read only memory or one time programmable memory so unlike uh, m rom so unlike m rom it is not pre programmed by the the manufacturer means manufacturer will not program it uh, it it is uh, it can be programmed by the end user but only one time so what it has is it is having nichrome and polysilicon wires arranged in a matrix matrix fashion and uh, these wires these wires can be functionally viewed as fuses so it will be having some structure like this so where will be having rows and columns and uh, these rows and columns are wired so like this so there will be a connection between the the row and the the column okay and uh, it need to be programmed by using a prom programmer there will be a programmer for programming the prom and it is called as a prom programmer so how it is program means uh, by selectively burning the the fuses according to the the bit pattern to be stored suppose that if we require some data 101 so 101 need to be stored in the first row so then what happens is uh, wherever one is there so that need that fuse is kept as it is and whenever there is a zero so this fuse will be blown off so this fuse will be blown off and if we require some 001 in the second row then what happens is so as this is zero so this fuse will be blown and this is zero so this fuse will be blown as uh, this is one this uh, fuse will remain as it is so the fuses which are not blown are burned represents the logic one as we have taken an example here so whenever fuse is available so that is treated as one and whenever the fuse is blown off whenever uh, the fuse is burned or blown that represents a logic zero but default one is nothing but logic one itself why because the manufacturer will be providing the prom ic with the fuses available and uh, based on the user requirement user can use the prom programmer and blow off the fuses wherever it is needed that means whatever the bit pattern he will be storing according to that the fuse of fuses will be blown off and it will be storing that particular data and uh, so it is uh, widely used for commercial production of embedded systems so whose prototype versions are proven and the code is finalized so why because as it is a one time programmable so whenever the code is final or we can say the prototyping is completed and uh, the final uh, version of the code is available then what uh, user can do is it can just dump the code into the or uh, whatever the manufacturer is he can directly dump the the code into the the prom using prom programmer okay so that is how this is widely used in the the commercial productions of embedded systems and it is also a low cost solution low cost solution for commercial production and uh, it cannot be otps cannot be reprogrammed that is the disadvantage so it advantage is that it is low cost and it can be used in the commercial production of embedded systems why because the final code can be easily dumped into the the prom using prom programmer and uh, that's a disadvantage is that it cannot be reprogrammed that means whenever there is an upgrade so we can't change the the program that is the disadvantage so coming to mosfet ram so we have seen that the in mosfet ram the pro, the programming is done at the factory itself so end user has no possibility to program so any upgrade can also can also be uh, 
not included in the the masco drum as well as the the prom and next coming to the next type of uh, rom we have electrically erasable read only memory there is nothing but e prom e prom so e prom has uh, the flexibility to reprogram the the same chip so whatever the the drawbacks we have in uh, masco drum and uh, prom so masco drum cannot be programmed by the end user and uh, the prom can be programmed by end user but only one time so that uh, disadvantage uh, is uh, is uh, avoided by using this eprom that means uh, it can be reprogrammed the eprom can be reprogrammed by erasing the content which is already present on the the eprom chip so the data new data can be returned onto that eprom chip and uh, it stores the bit information by charging the floating gate of fet so generally uh, it will be having a structure like this uh, it will be having a fet along with that there will be a capacitor so it depends upon uh, which type of uh, which type of uh, eprom it is using so it is nothing but a fet it is it will be storing in the form of a charge it will be storing in the form of a charge and uh, the bit information whenever it is charged to one it will be storing there one if it is not charged then it will be storing zero so next coming to the it can be programmed using eprom programmer as we have in prom uh, programming prom programmer for uh, storing this uh, whatever the data needed in the eprom chip so that bit information can be stored into the eprom by using eprom programmer and how it is doing that is by applying high voltage to the voltage to charge the floating gate so whatever the floating gates are there so they need to be charged they need to be charged why because if at all we need to store there one it need to be charged and if at all we don't require one there that is if you require a zero so that uh, will not be charged so like that the uh, eprom programmer will be programming the ic that is eprom ic and it contains a quartz crystal window uh, for erasing the stored information so as i told earlier we can't directly store the data new data into the e, uh, eprom ic it need to, whatever the data which is already available that need to be erased and only after that we can uh, write the new data so for that purpose the for erasing the earlier information so you need to have a quartz crystal window so there will be a quartz crystal window and that window need to be exposed to ultraviolet rays for a fixed duration for a fixed duration then the data which is stored in that window portion will be erased off after that you can write the new data so even though the eprom chip is flexible in terms of reprogrammability it needs to be taken out of the circuit board and need to be put in ev eraser for 20 to 30 minutes so there is a program reprogrammability flexibility in the eprom but the disadvantage is that we can't uh, keep it on keep it it on the board and we can reprogram why because it need to be kept to the uv light and uh, that to nearly 20 and 20 to 30 minutes it need to be exposed to the ultraviolet rays so that is the disadvantage and next coming to the next type of uh, rom we have electrically erasable programmable read only memory we can simply call it as eprom e double eprom or e square prom okay so double e uh, double eprom or e square prom so it gives flexibility to reprogram the the same chip as uh, using electrical signals okay so whatever we have seen in eprom the erasing is done through the the ultraviolet rays but here the erasing is done through the 
the electrical signal system so that it is called e square prom electrically erasable programmable read only memory and uh, the information contained in eprom memory can be altered by using electrical signals okay and uh, this uh, alteration can be done at the register level or byte level that means if we have some 101 so that can be changed to uh, 110 so like that uh, the byte information suppose we uh, i am taking an example of 3 bits but generally the byte consists of 8 bits suppose if we have some uh, 1110 uh, and uh, 1111 so that need to be modified to some information so 1000001 that is nothing but 8 bits so the total 8 bits can be modified at a time by using the e square prom and uh, they can be erased and reprogrammed within the circuit so the advantage in this e square prom is that we can keep it on the board itself and reprogram by erasing the data but that is not possible in case of the eprom it need to be taken out of the circuit and it need to be placed to the the ultraviolet rays for a for a time of 20 to 30 minutes to erase the data and after that the data need to be returned and next uh, so these chips include uh, chip erase mode so uh, this is used for uh, erasing data in the, the few milliseconds so the data can be erased by using the, the chip erase mode and uh, that too within few milliseconds we can erase the data so this provides a greater flexibility for system design whatever eprom is there that also offers the, the flexibility but uh, whenever we need to reprogram it it will take it will consume some more time uh, in this e square from that time has been reduced to few milliseconds or we can say seconds so that uh, it is uh, pro it provides a greater advantage over the eprom but uh, here also there is a limitation the limitation is that the capacity is limited when compared to a standard ROM. So in standard ROM, we'll be having the storage in uh, range of few kilobytes. But uh, in this case, the storage may be limited in nature. And the next one uh, we have in uh, program storage memory is the, the flash memory. So it uses, it is also a variation of E square prom technology the flash is nothing but flash memory is the a variation of E square prom technology so it combines the reprogrammability of the E square prom uh, whatever the the reprogrammability feature of the E square prom which we have studied so that along with the high capacity of the standard ROMs so in the earlier slide itself we have seen so the disadvantage is that it does not have the high capacity as a standard ROM so that is avoided by using this uh, flash memory which is nothing but high capacity of standard ROMs along with whatever the reprogrammability of the e square ROM and here the data is organized in the the sectors or we can say blocks or pages so the data is organized in the form of uh, blocks or sectors or we can say in pages also and uh, the stores information in array of floating gate MOSFET transistors. So here also the data is stored in the form of floating gate MOSFETs itself and uh, the erasing of the memory can be done at sector level or even at the page level. So whatever we have seen this the data is organized in the form of sectors and pages. So we can do the erasing even at the sector level or page level without affecting other sectors and pages okay and uh, the sector uh, whatever the reprogramming flexibility what we have got so this is only available only after the sector or page is erased off we can store or any for any type of memory only after erasing the data we can reprogram the the any type of memory chip so here also the same thing the pages or sectors need to be erased before reprogramming and next uh, as i told earlier we have one more that is nvram so it is non volatile that means which is a feature of prom but uh, it is a ram itself so that will be considering under the 
the RAM section itself. So coming to the next type of memory which we have is nothing but the read-write uh, read memory or random access memory. It is nothing but RAM, read-only, uh, read-write memory or ran random access memory. Why? Because the data can be read from the, the memory and data can be returned into the, the memory. Uh, so that we call it as a read-write memory. And as uh, the data, as the data can be accessed from any location directly, we call it as a random access memory. So RAM is nothing but data memory or working memory for any type of controller processor. It is volatile. So it is volatile means whenever power is turned off, the contents will be destroyed. But uh, whatever we have seen the earlier memory that is wrong, that uh, the contents will be retained even when power is turned off. So as I told earlier, it is also called as a direct access memory. Why? Because uh, any location we can directly access without need to try without need for traversing through the entire memory location. Suppose that if we require a location to uh, suppose 0005. So you can directly go to this location. But in case of uh, the in case of ROM, we need to access this uh, 0005. It need to go all the locations from 0000 to 0005. That is 0000, 0001. 0, 02, 0, 03, 0, 04, then we can access the 0, 05 location. That is in case of ROM. But here you can directly access the, the 0, 05 location where data is available. Okay. So that is uh, random access. Random access of memory location is nothing but random access memory. So in read write memory or uh, random access memory, that is RAM. So we have three types that is SRAM. DRAM and NVRAM. So SRAM means static RAM, uh, DRAM means dynamic RAM and NVRAM means non-volatile RAM. So it is RAM but non-volatile in nature. Okay. So coming to the first one that is uh, under the RAM category, we have static RAM or we can simply call it as a SRAM. So it stores data in the form of voltage. It stores in the it stores data in the form of voltage and it is made up of flip-flops. It is made up of flip-flops. So coming to its implementation, so a SRAM cell or we can say a one bit storage can be realized by using six transistors or we can say six MOSFETs. And uh, in this uh, six MOSFETs, uh, the four MOSFETs will be uh, storing the the data in the flip-flop. So you can observe here a cross-coupled uh, four transistor structure. So uh, this is nothing but cross-coupled four transistor structures where data will be stored. And uh, we have other two other two res other two transistors so that can be used for controlling the access. So these are the two. So these are the two which are used for controlling the access to the memory cell. And uh, these four these four are used for storing the, the information that is for only storing one bit of information so there will be a cross coupled uh, flip flop structure so this is the structure and this will be storing the information and this uh, two transistors will be allowing uh, access to this memory location and next uh, it is a fastest type fastest form of the RAM fastest form of the RAM which is available and uh, it is fast due to its resistive networking and switching capabilities as it can switch very much fastly. So it is the, the fastest form of the, the RAM available. And coming to the second category of the RAM, we have dynamic RAM or we can say DRAM. So DRAM stores the, uh, the data in the form of charge. So it is made up of MOS transistor gates and you can find here the, the structure. So there will be a MOSFET along with that there will be a capacitor and uh, this capacitor will be storing the, the charge. So that's how the data is being 
uh, stored in the DRAM cell. So advantages of this uh, DRAM is that it is uh, having high density and it is also low cost compared to the SRAM. So why it is having high density means it uses just a, a single MOSFET along with that a single capacitor. But coming to the SRAM cell, it uses six cells, six transistors for storing only one bit of information. But here only uh, one transistor is needed for storing one bit of information. So why? Because if we consider some space, so in that space we can have more number of DRAM cells rather than SRAM cells. So that we can say that the DRAM is high is having high density and uh, as it can store more information with the same area which we considered for SRAM. So it is it will also cost very low compared with the SRAM cells. So one is one disadvantage is there with the the DRAM cells. Why? Because it is stored, uh, the information is stored in the form of charge. What happens is there will be a leakage. So that uh, leakage, that, uh, that means of the time, the data will be leaking to the capacitor as the, so that uh, it need to be periodically refreshed. It need to be periodically refreshed as the, the capacitor discharges. So if at all it is storing one and the, the capacitor due to leakage the capacitor uh, discharges to zero then it will be showing up data as zero so which is the wrong data so what uh, we need to do is it need to be uh, periodically refreshed so that it will retain the, the contents so there will be some special circuits like uh, DRAM controllers so which will be used for refreshing operation and what they will do is they will refresh this uh, uh, DRAM cells periodically, generally in uh, milliseconds of interval. Okay, and uh, coming to the the differences between this SRAM and DRAM, uh, as we have seen in the previous slides as well. So SRAM is made up of uh, six uh, CMOS transistors, but uh, coming to the DRAM cell, it uses just a single capa single MOSFET capacitor, and uh, single MOSFET uh, and a capacitor and uh, SRAM does not require any refreshing but DRAM need to be refreshed why because uh, the capa the data will be lost uh, due to the leakage so that it need to be periodically refreshed so coming to the SRAM as it uh, uses six uh, CMOS transistor for storing single uh, bit of information uh, but coming to DRAM, it stores uh, the in one bit of information with a single MOSFET and a capacitor. So it is uh, it is having high capacity or high dense. Coming to SRAM, it is having low capacity or low dense. And SRAM is the most uh, expensive one. And uh, coming to this DRAM, it is very less expensive. And uh, coming to operation speed, so SRAM is fast in operation and uh, the general typical time for uh, accessing the memory location is uh, memory location is nothing but SRAM memory location is 10 nanoseconds. Uh, DRAM is slow slow in operation why because uh, due to the refreshing requirements it is slow and uh, generally its access time is 60 nanoseconds. So coming to writing operation the DRAM will be uh, faster in writing operation. Why? Because uh, for reading, uh, the re refreshment need to be done so that it will take consume more time. But uh, during write operation, we are just writing the data so that it will be consuming less time. So we can say in write operation, DRAM can be faster. And next, uh, coming to the one uh, that is one more category under the RAM that is NVRAM. So it is random access memory, but uh, it is having a feature called non-volatile, which is present in the ROM, where contents will be retained even when power is turned off. So random access memory, we can say that uh, NVRAM is nothing but RAM with a battery backup. So why? Because the, uh, there is a battery which will be continuously running. So there will not be any power off and it will be retaining the, the contents of the RAM. So it uh, it is nothing but a static uh, RAM itself, but with a 
minute battery so that means a, a stamp with a minute battery and uh, so that battery will be providing the supply to this memory even when external power supply is off and uh, this two that is a stamp and battery are packed together in a single package single package and uh, it is non volatile uh, storage why because there will not be any power off so it is non volatile in nature and uh, generally its lifetime is nothing but uh, around 10 years and we ram life span is around 10 years uh, it is based on the battery backup that means if the battery lifetime is more than that then uh, its lifetime will extend also so ds1744 uh, from maxim or dallas is nothing but an example for 32 kilobyte nv ram and in the next lectures will be dis uh, will be discussing about the topics is memory according to the type of interface next uh, we'll uh, study about uh, what are the the memory shadowing techniques and also about the the memory selection for the embedded systems and after that we'll be going into the the another uh, part another uh, part that is uh, sensors and actuators and after that we'll be having the the communication interface so subscribe to the the channel and press the bell icon so that you will be uh, receiving the the notifications whenever i upload a new video so please do like uh, share and subscribe thank you